Stay tuned for the best $1,000 gaming PC for your money in May 2016, plus an added bonus. Before I get into anything, I highly recommend that you wait until the end of this video because I'm going to be talking about the brand new release of the GTX 1070 and 1080 from NVIDIA, the two most powerful graphics cards to ever be released, and they're surprisingly cheap for what they can do. They are both being released on May 27th, and let me tell you, they are worth the wait. That being said, starting off the build is going to be the Intel Core i5 4690K 3.5GHz quad-core processor. I went with the K model so you guys can get some light overclocking in. For $224, this is the best processor for gaming in my opinion. Yes, an i7 is obviously going to be a bit better, but for gaming, all you really need to do is make sure you have a CPU that does not bottleneck your graphics card, which the CPU does not do at all, by the way. It performs very well. It can even handle some multitasking, rendering, streaming, anything you really want to do with it. The only time I'd say an i7 is better to have for gaming is when you're playing a really CPU intensive game such as Arma, Daisy, or ARK Survival, which honestly will still perform very well with this chip, and normally most games are more heavily hitting on the graphics card, which is going to be a beast in this build. Cooling the CPU is going to be the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo 82.9 CFM sleeve bearing CPU cooler for 30 bucks. This CPU cooler is going down in infamy as one of the best air cooling CPUs you can buy, especially for 30 bucks. This thing is awesome, a lot of people use it, including myself and it's going to allow for some moderate overclocking if you want to, which I would highly recommend considering I've set it up perfectly for you in this build. For the motherboard, I went with the MSI Z97 SLI Crate Edition ATX LGA1150 motherboard for $110. This is an awesome motherboard, full ATX, and it supports SLI, so if you wanted to upgrade in the future, you can go with an SLI rig. It also has USB 3 headers, and it has room to upgrade your RAM if you want to as well. Speaking of which, the RAM I chose is going to be the g Scalpers X series, 8GB of DDR3 memory, 2 sticks of 4GB. Now I know some of the newer titles are recommending that you have 12GB of RAM instead of 8GB. However, I think 8GB is still just fine for now. I haven't had any problems with only having 8GB. I think it's awesome. And RAM is so cheap now. Honestly, if you really, really wanted to, you could go ahead and upgrade. All you have to do is add an extra 4GB stick. Or if you even wanted to have 16 gigs, all you have to do is add two 4GB sticks. That's only an extra 40 bucks. I definitely left that for you in the build. It is very possible if you really really wanted to but honestly I don't think it's necessary but uh, the option is there if you would like it. For the storage, I went with the Seagate Barracuda 1TB 3.5 inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive for $46. I know a lot of you and a lot of people will recommend the Western Digital Caviar Blue as your 1TB mass storage drive. However, I have the Seagate Barracuda in my build. I've had it for over a year. It hasn't had any problems and it's the exact same thing as a Western Digital Caviar Blue for $5 less. So I don't know why you would go with the Caviar Blue over the Seagate Barracuda. Now in this build, I actually did include a solid state drive. Usually I don't, and I'll explain why in a second. But the solid state drive that I picked out is going to be the Samsung 850 Evo series 250 gigabyte two and a half inch solid state drive for about 90 bucks. Usually I don't recommend that you include a solid state drive into a build because usually I do lower budget builds and I would rather spend the extra $90 or $50 or whatever it is towards a better video card because that is obviously gonna be a lot more important in terms of gaming performance than a solid state drive. The only thing a solid state drive can really do for you is give you faster boot up speeds and faster map loading times and whatnot but in terms of in-game performance it's really not going to have that much of a hit as the number one the video card number two the cpu and number three the ram those are the three most important things in terms of gaming as well as motherboard and whatnot but the solid state drive is kind of an added luxury but i figured if you're spending a thousand dollars you're going to want to have really great performance and fast speeds you're able to do that and you have the room to do that when you're spending the 90 dollars on the samsung 850 evo for the video card, I went with the MSI GeForce GTX 970 4GB Twin Frozer 5 video card for $332. I recommend this video card to a lot of people and I have it in a lot of my higher end builds because this thing is a beast and for $331, you're not going to beat it. It's an awesome card. Even though it has the half gigabyte RAM error, it still maxes out on a lot of games and performs very highly. However, please wait until the end of the video so I can tell you about the brand new GTX 1070 because believe me, you're going to want to hear about it. Housing this build is going to be the Bit Phoenix Neos Black and Red ATX Mid Tower case for 50 bucks. I think this case is sexy. It has a lot of good reviews. Although it has no side panel window, I think it still looks really good. And honestly, when are you going to be staring at your PC? You're not. You're going to be staring at the monitor, which is why I don't really think having a side panel window is all that important. I have one in my case just because it happened to be in the case, but I don't really stress out about that kind of stuff. If you really want to get a different case, be my guest. But I think this is an awesome case anyway, and it does the job just fine. Powering the build is going to be the Corsair C. 
CX 600 watt 80 plus bronze certified semi modular ATX power supply for $67. This is a 600 watt power supply, which is more than double what you need for this build and it's semi modular, which will be awesome for your cable management. Lastly, the optical drive, some standard Samsung optical drive, obviously 18 bucks, whatever. Now, what I wanted to talk about the GTX. 1070 and 1080. They were announced recently and they are going to be released on May 27th to the general public. Obviously, they're going to sell out immediately, so if you really want to get this, I would recommend that you wait for it to be released and refresh your page over and over again so you can order one ASAP because I guarantee you by May 28th, they're both going to be sold out because so many people want to get their hands on these, and I'll tell you why. The GTX 1080 is about 600 bucks, which is obviously out of your price range. However, the GTX 1070 is only $370, which is well within your price range and nvidia is claiming that it has more performance than the titan x if you're not familiar with the titan x it is the top of the line video card that is out right now and it's around a thousand dollars to buy one so that is why this is such a huge deal all you have to do to get the 1070 instead of the 970 drop the gtx 970 from this build as well as the samsung 850 evo solid state drive that's going to leave you with about 200 bucks from there, you can pick up the 1070 for $370 and still have $30 left over if you want to add more RAM to your build. You could have 16 gigabytes of RAM, an i5 4690K that is overclocked, and the brand new GeForce GTX 1070. I guarantee you, you will max out every game you play. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time. Peace. It's never a problem, so niggas is violent and bitches, they all wanna stick. I lick it, split in the whip with my niggas, my family, my clique. And the broke is a joke, so I never be sleeping till I know I'm waking up rich.